What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on the ongoing COVID pandemic and, of course, other viruses that could also be a health threat to you. Subscribe to my channel down below if you want to see more content like this. Do you enjoy this content? Give it a thumbs up. Do you think more people need to stay safe and informed, which is pretty much everyone? By all means, hit that share button down below. And if you got something to say, a comment, leave a comment down below. I always love to hear what you have to say. All right, starting off today, we don't have a lot of news. It's been a busy day. I haven't had a lot of time to do research for news. We're very late with this update today. As you can see, it is now 7 o'clock at night. Well, no, you can't see, but we are recording this 7 o'clock in the evening, which is far later than normal. So we're going to do a few news stories. We're going to take a look at some of our regular data, some wastewater data, Walgreens data, air quality, EMS stuff, and that will be about it for today. Starting off today, this is something that we have known about for quite some time during the pandemic, but it just confirms it even more. Study. Kids with COVID but no symptoms play a key role in household spread. Yes, you know, you send a kid to school. Uh, say someone is sick in school. They come home. They test positive. Uh, they bring COVID home with them. And they test positive but don't really have any symptoms. Yeah, it happens quite often. Asymptomatic spread. That is what this is called. And oftentimes, uh, asymptomatic spread, just because a child is asymptomatic, doesn't mean someone else in the household can't get it from them. And it doesn't mean they can't become symptomatic, moderate, or even severe. It does happen in some cases. There have been many of stories since the start of this pandemic where an asymptomatic child uh, has COVID, no symptoms, but someone else in the household gets it much differently and gets it far worse. Or another big problem is with asymptomatic spread, you know, a child could go to school, it could go anywhere. A child could be positive for COVID, but you don't know it because there's no symptoms and they never tested for COVID. It's a real problem that's been ongoing during the majority of this pandemic. All right, measles cases in the United States. That's right, we have to move over to measles now because measles is important as well. Again, this is the pandemic update where we talk about all viruses, not just COVID, but the main focus is COVID. I sometimes get questions. Why do you talk about other viruses if it's... Um, I've, I got a message one day. Why do you talk about other viruses if you're doing a pandemic? It's because all these viruses are a part of our health. And trust me, I've also had the other way around. If I don't talk about other viruses, well, you know, there's a lot of other viruses out there making people sick. Why don't you talk about them as well? We do. We talk about all of them. But we mainly talk about is COVID. Right now, real quickly, we need to go into measles. More measles cases are detected in Illinois and New York as the total number now climbs to 64. Getting back to COVID now. In Michigan, this is uh, not good. Michigan COVID tracker. Cases jump. Yeah, jump. In other words, they went up by 30% as hospitalizations fall. So their hospitalizations are dropping, but their cases are up. Michigan reported 1,785 confirmed and probable COVID-19 cases for the week ending in Tuesday, yesterday. Up 30% from the 1,369 reported last week. So that's not good. And this article was last updated on March 26 at 8.46 p.m. That's yesterday. So, yes, this is recent numbers. Michigan, for whatever reason, is seeing a rise. We have seen, since the pandemic has started back in 2020, instances where Michigan will see a rise in the spring, and that appears to be the case right now. Very interesting to see how that uh, happens. I don't, I can't recall if it happened last year, but it just seems like um, the majority of the years of this pandemic, there was a spring wave in Michigan, and you remember a couple of years ago, got pretty severe, and the media actually was all over it. All right, air quality today, you're seeing a lot of green. That's a good thing, but there are some areas that are problematic. Some minor problems out on the West Coast, minor problems in Kansas and Nebraska, 
and of course the Great Lakes into portions of the Northeast. Yes, there are some minor air quality problems today. Not sure why we're seeing such bad air quality today in New York. There is a stalled frontal boundary. Don't know if that's doing anything. It has a southwest flow. But take a look at this. Some bad air quality in New York State today. Taking a look at EMS totals for Tuesday in Philadelphia. 677. That's a low number. We will take it. Doing a live look in, a very late live look in at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania shows we have three cardiac emergency calls there right now. Subject in pain, head injury, altered mental status, and typical episode. How about Chester County, Pennsylvania? Not bad, but look at this. Respiratory, sick person, respiratory. I've been seeing a lot more of those type calls lately. I don't know if it's because spring allergy season is fully up. And we did see the air qualities. Let's go back once again. Chester County, Pennsylvania, which is right around it here. Uh, not terrible. So, wouldn't say it's because of air quality. Maybe there is a post-St. Patrick's Day wave of illness that is starting to set up there. Honestly, I don't know. It's something I will continue to watch and keep you updated on if I hear anything. Walgreens, the national positivity rate is 15.1%. The prior week is 15.5%. Difference of down, 0.4%. And of course, testing is down as well, which is why we see some of these states that are red. And also, we have a lot of states not reported. Taking a look at some individual states, let's look at Pennsylvania. I know we didn't do Pennsylvania yesterday. The positivity rate is 12.7%. The prior week was 14.2%. That's down by 1.4%, which is a good thing. Testing's also down. 102 versus 113. Testing down. Positivity rate down. That is a legitimate drop. Drop, I should say. North Carolina. Positivity trend. 16.1%. The prior week is 14.7%. That's actually up by 1.5%, but testing, it's way down, 384 versus 491. Let's come down to Georgia. Georgia, 13.6% positivity rate this week. Last week was 17%, down 3.5%. Total testing, it's down. So this is a legitimate drop, 295 tests versus 493. Now let's go out to Nevada, 17.6% positivity rate this week. 27.3% last week. This is a significant drop. It's down by 9.6%. You also don't do much testing. 17 versus 11. So testing actually went up for you. It's one of the rare states where testing went up. Finally, let's do Alaska. 10% positivity rate in Alaska. Prior week was 20%. That's down by 10%. Total test. 10 versus 10. So positivity rate down. Testing stayed the same. You don't do a lot of testing. But Hey, that's some good news. So your rates are not rising at this time. All right, let's take a look at some wastewater scan sites. Let me refresh this. That way we make sure it's the most up-to-date data. Yesterday, we left you off with Harrison, Arkansas. Today, let's take a look at what is going on in portions of Georgia. How about we come down to Columbus, Georgia, and we'll see what's going on there. COVID, it's still listed as high, but at this time, if you take a look, the most recent update, it's dropping. RSV, not much of an issue at this time. Influenza A, it's, it's still coming in high, but quite frankly, it's not rising at this point. Ever so slight rise in influenza B, that could get updated and corrected. Norvirus is rising slightly at this time. HMPV is also rising slightly at this time. No MPOX detections. And the most recent detection for hepatitis A was back on March 11th. All right, continuing on here, we'll do two more wastewater sites. And let's go up to the north this time. How about we go up to Akron, Ohio, and see what's going on there. In Akron, Ohio, COVID at this time. It is dropping. RSV still listed as high, but quite frankly, it, that look, does not look very high to me. Influenza A is uh, leveled at this time. It's not rising. It's in the. It still says high, but quite frankly, I would say that's either low to moderate at this point. Influenza B is dropping. Norvirus is rising ever so slightly. HMPV starting to see a rise with that. And we do see that there was a detection of MPOX back on March 21st. Hey, that's recently. So be mindful of that. And there have been some detections of hepatitis A. Now let's go out further west. How about we come out to Denver, Colorado, or just southeast of there, North Parker, 
Colorado. Let's try for that and see what's going on there. North Parker, Colorado is low at this time. RSV, not much of an issue at this time. Influenza A is rising ever so slightly. Influenza B is dropping. Norovirus has seen a significant drop. And HMPV is rising just ever so slightly. And again, look at this. March 21st, a detection of MPOX. Don't know how legitimate that is. That's two sites now with the exact same minimal detection and then a higher detection. Could be this site's having a glitch again. And there are some detections of hepatitis A. All right, moving on now. Let's take a look at some hospital data. We'll take a look here at the national level. And this is from the HHS and CDC website. And the national hospitalizations are 76.1% of all hospital beds are being used in the United States. COVID-19 is at 1.5% of hospital beds being used. 0.9% is for influenza and someone did bring a good point to my attention i can't remember if it was twitter or a comment on here but there is definitely a situation in america with rural hospitals needing capacity i mean i can think in pennsylvania of a few rural hospitals rural hospitals that have closed within the last 10 years meaning if you need emergency care you have to travel further to get to a hospital yeah it's a problem and it's also creating capacity issues in rural America. So yes, it is definitely a problem. Let me know. Is that a problem in your state where you have to travel far to get to the hospital? I want to know. Leave a comment down below. ICU capacity. 71.1% of uh, all ICU beds are being used in America. COVID-19, 1.5% of the beds are being used. Influenza makes up uh, 1%. So just a percent and a half for COVID, 1% for influenza. And we all know, speaking of hospital capacity, Rhode Island. We've shown it several times. We're not going to do it right now, but Rhode Island, yes, there is definitely a hospital capacity issue going on there. Most states in the United States do have dropping COVID death levels at this time. Hospital admissions in the past week, 10,719. That's down by 20.9%. Taking a look at epidemic status. It's decreasing for COVID in all of the United States. However, for influenza flu, it is rising ever so slightly in Kansas still. Hopefully that will change within the next week. JN.1 is the leading variant at 86.5%. JN1.13 is second at 9.5%. JN1.18 is at 1.8%. We'll get another update on this on Friday. I don't know if I'm bringing you an update Friday or if there'll be a Saturday edition. Again, it's day by day. See what happens over the next couple. How busy I am. I mean, today, look how late we're doing an update. We're almost not going to do an update today. National flu levels, not doing that bad. Now, there's still some places that are high or very high. Washington, D.C., you're still very high. Nebraska, you're still very high. And this is all trending downward in most places. You can see, as I loop this, now we're going forward again. You can see it's starting to decrease in the majority of the U.S. But again, Easter's coming. That could cause a spike for this. It could also cause there to be a rise in the number of COVID infections. Taking a look at what's going on in New Jersey today. And in New Jersey, this number continues to drop. 263 hospitalizations, 69 out of 70 hospitals reported, and only 11 people on a ventilator in the ICU, 39 at this time, and discharges today, 36 people discharged. New York State, 385 cases. I suspect... Tomorrow will be the last day we get New York State. They'll probably take a hot test, probably go away for the holiday weekend, which means Good Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then they'll come back again, maybe on Monday. I don't know. Hospitalizations in New York State, 598. In the ICU, 69. So this number continues to drop as well. It's just an ever so slight drop from yesterday, but hey, a drop is a drop. Speaking of dropping, Colorado. Number of people in the hospital with COVID dropped to 95. This is some good news. And it does say here that cases reported in the last week are down by 109, making that a total of 767 reported cases. Alrighty, that does it for today's very late edition of the Pandemic Update. We may have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow. Stay tuned to my Twitter account or the post here on um YouTube, I may put a uh, post on there stating whether or not there'll be an update tomorrow, and I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up if you like it. Share this with anyone you know. And, of course, leave your comments down below. See you again next time. Thanks for watching.